Well, after announcing their return to the NBL with a bang, the Brisbane Bullets are already starting to discover the reality of this very tough, even competition. And it doesn't get any easier tonight with last year's grand finalists, the New Zealand Breakers, hungry and desperate to find their brilliant form of 2015-16. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brisbane Convention and Exhibition Centre for Saturday Night Live Basketball. Anthony Hudson alongside the legendary Steve Garfino. Steve, these two sides really need to win tonight to state the obvious because they're both slipped out of the top four already. Exactly. And you hit the nail on the head when you said these are important games. You don't want to drop too many because it's going to be very difficult to get three in a row. you got to figure that especially New Zealand are going to come back shooting the basketball better. they got some great scorers that haven't been able to find the basket. No, both sides really are struggling on that front. We can see, as I mentioned, they've slipped outside the top four. A couple of losses in a row for Brisbane after they started so strong. And the Breakers have really looked a shadow of themselves so far, the form that got them to those grand final playoffs last year. Here's some of the games of round three. Of course, uh, a big game here tonight. As I said, both sides having losses on Thursday night. The action continues tomorrow with United and the Wildcats and Sydney and Illawarra to finish off the round. But take us through the starting five, starting with the home team, the Brisbane Bullets. A big one for the Brisbane Bullets. They've got to put some points on the board. As we mentioned, it will continue. That will be the story. And they've got some scores, especially in the backcourt. And Jermaine Veal, he is going to be able have to put some put the ball in the basket, make plays out of nothing late in the shot clock. He has the ability to do that. But they don't want to keep going to the well and getting late in the shot clock. There's the guards, Jermaine Veal and Adam Gibson, who came in big in week one. Torrey Craig, super athletic. They came up just short against Adelaide. Kicker's got to shoot the ball more. He is a prolific scorer outside the three-point line. Got to start doing that more, and Tom Jervis is the center. Yeah, well, so the Bullets need to score more, and so do the team they play tonight. They, they are full of fine scorers. Uh, some changes from last year's team, but Kirk Penny's there now. Corey Webster's struggling for form, so it's going to be interesting to see if they can find some of that shooting form tonight. Yeah, that'll be key. I mean, you got to get guys going like Kirk Penny, only shooting 31% from the field and so that's just something that has to change watching him shooting warm-ups I don't think I saw him miss a shot so I'm sure he's going to get it going and they've just got to continue to go to Webster and go to Penny and just believe that those guys are going to turn it around yeah and the likes of Abercrombie as well if they can like he's the leading scorer so far this year so we'll see whether he can turn it on tonight but uh, we're looking forward to the action as we said two sides hungry for a win crowd really starting to pour in in Brisbane the excitement of basketball being back in this town you can feel it and we're going to feel it right Right after this with the tip off coming your way. basketball returning to Brisbane and as we mentioned they started so well but the reality of this NBL competition and it's just so even and, and the depth is there across all the teams so I guess after the adrenaline pumping the first few nights uh, they've got to just find what their right line is and their right rhythm and what better than tonight to get that back together Steve and that's the thing you know they got a couple of wins under their belt was such a positive thing for them because with a new team they're going to struggle with the flow of their offense and getting to know one another and probably the excitement and the fact that they are a very good defensive team as well probably got them through the first week but then when you're not shooting the basketball well and you're looking a little stagnant on the offensive end the better teams the teams that have the core group are going to beat you and that's what you got to try to keep away from we talked about you know guys well teams struggling to get it going winning three or four in a row is going to be like missing mission impossible this year Hard to know how much history means when a team like Brisbane have been out of the competition for such a period of time, but uh, they certainly have a dominant record. 13 wins to three over the Breakers, and in Brisbane it's eight to one, so they'll be going against some history. Andre Lamanis, we saw him there, the Boomers coach, against playing against his old team, a team that he led to so much success. 
uh, beginning back in 2011. It's kind of like two New Zealand Breakers teams that when they were playing the Brisbane Bullets, when they were in the competition, Brisbane had probably the, if not the best lineup ever to line up to win a championship that had C.J. Bruton on it, Sam McKinnon, Mark Bradke, all kind of great stars. Of course, Adam Gibson was on that team as a rookie, and New Zealand was new into the league. But then and Brisbane was the powerhouse. So, you know, now with New Zealand, one of the top two franchises in the 2000s with them and the Perth Wildcats, you know, it's a re reversal of fortune. So we're just about set to go. Round three continuing here in Brisbane on a Saturday night. The crowd have really come in. It's been a beautiful day in Brisbane and come in a little late, but they're certainly filling the venue tonight. And they'll be looking, as we said, after a disappointing last Sunday night against Adelaide. It was one heck of a match. Great performance by the Adelaide 36ers to win away. And they've uh, they cranked that form last night on a uh, Friday night at home. So let's see what happens. There's Legend goes at it against Jervis. It's going to be a New Zealand ball. With ben Woodside. He's running the show. Corey Webster starting on the bench. Kona. Oh, swift. Faster than the eye could see. Just about into Penny with the easy two. Well, that a good a shooter going. A couple of easy baskets like that. Kirk Penny works so well without the basketball. Beal. This is Jervis. This is a little bit rough around the edges for Brisbane. And again, New Zealand ball. A stuttering start for the home team. Abercrombie so dangerous from there. There's Woodside. Good look in the end. That's two point blank looks for the breakers early when you're when your offense is struggling. That's exactly one you get. Post catches real close to the hoop. Kick it. It's been surprisingly reluctant to put up the three of late, even though he's so damaging from there. Again, gets much closer to the basket, rolls in an easy two. He's certainly been a form player for them, even if he hasn't been scoring from outside. Well, he's been shooting such a high percentage. You got to think that he's not taking enough shots. And Penny, that was a much tougher shot to make. As we see the starting five for the breakers there, Steve. Yeah, Woodside, Ben Woodside in the lineup. No Corey Webster. That's probably the surprise. It's obviously a good starting five, but. Corey Webster has just been one of the stars of the league. It's surprising that he's not in the starting five for the Breakers. That just steps over the line. Ben Woodside, a 31-year-old rookie import. Played in France, Slovenia, Turkey, Italy. Attended college in North Dakota. So a well-traveled and experienced player joining the New Zealand lineup. Jervis has the ball. Deal, not tempted, at least not yet. Goes to the jams it. And that gets the crowd involved. Floating pass for the corner. Reaches around the field. Now kick it. Port player Tory Craig. He's averaging 33 minutes a game. Just four points against United. On Thursday night, they need more from him than that. Jervis, bustling in. Young Logan, can't score. Play straight, play straight. Go, Hardy. Play straight. Ledger, which is over. Doesn't get the roll, but the Crombie is penalised. Gibson on the block out. This is dribble penetration on the baseline. So important to keep your dribble alive so you can find those cutters flashing from the high post. Kick it. Now Tory Craig. Craig, who was the import with cans for the last two seasons.
rebounding ball. And now it's Gibson. Kick it. Yep, he'll take that. Oh, good hand. No, not a good hand. It's going to cost him three shots. Bacona. Fresh from his 300th game for the Breakers on Thursday night. The veteran, Mika Bacona. Well, as much as you don't want to sh foul the three-point shooter, he's super accurate out there, 48% career-wise, Daniel Kicker. But he's even more money from the foul line. He's a 90% foul shooter. 23 points on Thursday night, Daniel Kicker. And that's the most by Bullets player in any game this year. Picture of concentration. Two down, one to go. And the Bullets will be back within a point. He's gone to the well and made his bread and butter. This part early in the season has been on the block. He's been real handy around the, around the hoop. Makes all three. Bairstow no comes into the game for the first time for the home team. Great to have Cam Besto back in the NBL. Abercrombie. Good side to set up again. One point margin now. Penny. Kona. Besto. Good defense. Good side. This is going to be the home ball. That's good defense on the low block against Mika Vakona. Of course, a very good passer out of the low post. And that's a shot that Brisbane would like to see New Zealand take. Shot clock winding down and Woodside shooting one with pressure. No size tonight, desperate for a win coming off consecutive losses. Hesco and now Cray. Answers inside. Deal. No, no. Not the perfect passing setup here. Pressure growing. Gibson senses it. Takes the big three and gives the home team the lead for the first time. Brisbane very good at creating mismatches on the on ball, getting you to switch. Woodside, they're watching Abercrombie very closely. So Woodside moves hard to the left, takes the shot himself, lovely floater. And levels the scores. Deal. Lost the handle momentarily, regained it and made maximum impact with a couple. That's what you need. If you got a couple of guys like that can late in the shot clock, get you a layup, you're not going to have big scoring droughts. Here's Woodside. Not this time. Webster's out there now for New Zealand, so see whether he can be used to good effect. Been surprisingly struggling, only averaging 10 points per game this year so far after 21 last year. Kick it. Works his way closer. Hard shot to make, but off the glass, he does just that. And one. Well, Bacona against the Kings got in foul trouble. That limited his hey, minutes. Hey, and right now, going to the bench. Just so you know, it's a 4-0 foul count. And here, a little of the displeasure just of what, the foul count. Just what the ref needed to know. <laughs> Well, this is where kick has been so good down on the block and he's an excellent passer he double -team. so fine start Daniel kick it he sits down with eight points to his name already and he's the main reason that Brisbane find themselves live in front inside Carrying a heavy load at the moment. Now Webster gets a little look. That's all he needs, usually. Gibson pushes the pace. 
Ernesto, see the determination on his face, spinning in the right spot, draws the contact. Now I saw every inch of the rim. That was clean. And a seven point margin after New Zealand were the ones out of the block. So this is a terrific turnaround within a quarter by the Bullets. Abercrombie, scoreless so far, has a rest. Cheap foul called on Craig. And we know it's their first foul of the night. <laughs> yeah, the coaching staff for New Zealand would have made them well aware of that. Paul Nari, four games coach for two wins to two losses. Being the assistant previously. And Webster, oh, got into a good spot. He gets a second go at it. In the corner, Penny, been quiet for the last few minutes. And Pesto, tough board taken. And they look to create again. Carefully through. And the foul ball for Mitch Young. She'll send Mitch Young to the line. Running the floor, Mitch Young has the ability to do that. Great role player, lots of offensive rebounds, very active on cuts, and he can run the floor. Robert Lowe, who's in the game for the first time tonight. 18 to 10 now. It's getting a bit precarious here for New Zealand. Patience. And he's, New Zealand haven't scored since it was tied up at 10 all. Oh. We're gonna go again. Oh. Run of nine for Brisbane. That's the margin. Woodside can do something about it. Any sort of penetration here. Grabs the ball. He had grabbed. Even the ones straight out of the basket he can't make. Double clutch from Mitchell. Sean Bruce. Besto. Back to Bruce again. Besto, some solid contact there. It's almost incidental contact, but then he gets called. Well, if he keeps his feet, that's not a foul. That's just unfortunate for Kirk Penny. You know, he's got the ball. That's a foul. I mean, it's unfortunate, but he, he can't not call that. You can see and feel the frustration of New Zealand and Kirk Penny. Oh, I was about to say 10 consecutive points, but just hold on that for a moment. You know, when your team's not playing well, those are the little things that don't go your way. You know, a little off balance, run into somebody, and fall over. That'll count because he got a piece of the rim. So now we have 10 consecutive points. Mitchell. It was all good till the shot was taken. Oh, into the simplest of baskets being missed. To enter that time, Besto will make the pay. Yes! And they needed the timeout. Things are going well. You know, Toretto on that makes a great defensive play. Reads where the dribble's going to go, gets it away from Sean Bruce, makes a great drive, turn in the corner, and then just missed the layup. He would make that 
99 times out of 100. Well, we said the big scorers need the need big games, and Tom Abercrombie is one of those. He was in great form against Perth. He's got to find this from outside. He sure does. You know, averaging just over 14 points a game. The only New Zealand breaker in the top 20 in scoring. You know, he's capable of putting up some big numbers. Super athletic. Can drop the three. Pull up jump shots. One of the better pull up jump shot shooters in the competition. He does need to come up big, but he needs some help. Yeah, you hit the wing. All time leading scorer for the breakers. Hey, hey, when we're driving in the lane, we're shooting floaters, knocking soft shots. So you can see the emotion that he needs to get, but the smart shots they need to take. Exactly. His point is they're, they're settling for floaters and pull-ups while Brisbane on the other end of the floor getting point-blank shots, getting drives and dunks and getting to the foul line. And that's the difference in the game. So score 22 to 10. It's a 12-point run to the Bullets. Webster takes it down the floor this time. Webster, that's better. His first score of the night. As we said, it's been a drought for him. 11, 9, and 14 in his three games. Normally a start. Suddenly a, a little mini run here. The away team, and so it's the bullets that need to rediscover. And there's a little fumble, so it's amazing how quickly the worm can turn within a game. Sure does. I think that Mitch Young just assumed that Beal was going to shoot that and he was going to crash the boards. I mean, that's his job. Of course, he's, you know, should be catching passes on dribble penetration, but, you know, he would think, that, and as anyone would think, that Jermaine Beal was going to shoot that one. New Zealand winning the rebound count, 7-4. to four. Not winning too many other numbers at the moment. Woodside. It's just two points to his name so far. He gives that one up. Kick it back out there. Been the star of this game so far. Gets a good look from outside. Makes it count. Splashes the big three and kick it 11 points in this opening quarter. He is red hot. He is not doing a whole lot wrong. Very selective on his three-point shooting. Yep. Call came early. And Daniel kicking. And such a tough cover because he's got such a good shot fake. Looks like the early stages of his shot. Super finisher and, as I mentioned, an excellent passer once he draws a double team. Been a great recruit for them from Melbourne United so far this season. Abercrombie got himself set. And the rest is history. There is the three to counter. And it's back to 17 now. Playing 25. Eight point ball game. Sean Bruce happy to play the patience game. Virtually no differential on the shot clock, so we'll just get one good one away. And it might come from kick it. He looked to draw the foul, and in the end, he can't believe it. Come on, Tom, baby. <laughs> Andre Lamont is coming all the way out of the court. Got his message across in a very cute way. 25-17 is your scoreline at quarter time. Great start for the Brisbane Bullets.
is in. So everybody gets to play. You need to look up at the big screen. If you see yourself up there, when they start, I want you to choose which box there is. The one is a two or three. You need to go one up if it's number one. You need to make a big show if you think it's number two. You need to cross your arms if it's number three. So who picks this number one? Put one arm up. Put both arms up to B if you think it's number two. You've got to cross your arms if you think it's number three. It's for a $100 gift card. We're going to pick ourselves out with whatever you think it is. It looks like we've got a winner. It looks like it's sitting in number... Scoring's been a problem this year for the Brisbane Bullets, but not for that man, Daniel Kickett, and it's not tonight for his team, as he's had an unbelievable first quarter, 11 points, including just one three, and what a sweet one it was. And the Brisbane Bullets have a nine-point advantage at quarter time, 26 playing 17, and that man is hot. Yeah, you got to get it to the hot guy, in my opinion, taking enough shots. He's three or four from the field. When you're that hot, you need to get up about six or seven in a quarter. Brisbane at 63%. The breakers just 44. Now Bruce. Still plenty of time for the shot clock. Start of the second quarter. Nice move from Cray and it ends with Jervis, but can't pop it in this time. Webster, you're exactly here, but watch out for this one. With authority, Mitchell slams it down. And when you win the preseason dunk contest, you're expecting something spectacular. Give that one eight out of ten, I reckon. That's about all. <laughs> He's got better than that to come. You're being very nice. That was, a, that was an important basket, though. He didn't want to get too fancy. No, exactly right. Yeah, it's probably a bit high, isn't it, really? His kick, it takes it all. Not even a, the, the clock was the reason. Even for a man as uh, sharp as him at the moment, that wasn't the ideal shot to take. Whoever takes it in. Lows out there, so plenty of bench still out on the court for the breakers. Shot clock to single figures. Running out of options. Mitchell. That's better. Hooks it in nicely. And consecutive baskets for Mitchell. Kill Mitchell from University of Virginia. Played for the New York Knicks in the Summer League in the NBA. So has some serious credentials. Bruce. New Zealand on a seven-point run. Margin back to five. And here we go again with Kill Mitchell. Yeah, I mean, he's up in the air. He's up there so easily, isn't he? Went through at pace. Boy, it looked like I could dunk that one with his elbow. It was <laughs> way above the rim. You know, sometimes when you have such an easy dunk and you get up so high, I'm not speaking from experience oh, well, personally, yeah. but you can be up too, too high. high. Yeah. yeah. yeah that was always maybe my take off a little further back. And, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm told. <laughs> Concerned look on the New Zealand coach, but they are starting to get their game together. Defending hard here. Gibson, kick it. Watching him like a hawk. Flings it in. Floating shot from Craig doesn't go. Anybody's ball. Abercrombie gave it straight to Best, though. He was trying to draw the foul as well, but he'll take the two. You normally don't see an experienced player make a mistake like that, try and save the ball underneath the other team's goal. Mitchell needed the friendly roll, doesn't get it. Fletcher decides to make it his own. Kicks it back out for Webster. Presses pulls. Oh, he'll take that every time, and it? It's all right, in the end, Fletcher makes it good. Webster is up to five and starting to get involved in this game more significantly. Kick it just knows exactly where he is and where his opponents are at the moment. Rolled back beautifully. And he's up to 13 points. 
Webster starting to be a factor. To Eddie needs to make it count. Brisbane starting to foul a little. Now, Toretta's given him some good minutes, but you know, that's a shot he's got to hit. Yep. Wide open look like that. Woodside's missed a similar shot. You know, those are the those are the baskets when they're winning championships that are knocked down automatically. Webster, the shot was a threat, ends up with a fadeaway and got it right. So good at creating space. And very underestimated with his strength. Matt Kenyon out on the floor for the Brisbane Bullets. Number four. Stairstone. Got to float one in. Somehow it ends up with Cray. He does well. Just keeping the breakers at arm's length at the moment. Led by nine at quarter time. Back to seven now. Ledger. Oh, well that. Oh. Ledger lost it completely. Webster. Just starting to be a little bit of a factor in this game now, Corey Webster. Not really seeing it on the board yet, but he's starting to get involved in so many more of their plays. He's up to seven points. Yeah, he looks as if you know, he's coming off those screens and being a factor. Looks like he's in rhythm. That one just wasn't a beautiful play, but just showing you the hustle of these teams. Mitch Young. Hey, good call. Gets the finish. Balakur is there. One step. I like that. I think that's an easy continuation to call. It's back to nine. And now ten. Thank you. Team on Webster needs a help. Woodside provides. Webster, not the easiest, but he can make anything look easy. You called it. He just looked as if he's feeling confident out there, creating space, pulling up confidently. Changes the whole dynamic of the game when he's hot. Gibson. Wasn't an easy path to the basket for Gibson. Took it anyway. Gets fouled along the way. Gibson felt like he was fouled the entire time as he's driving down the court. Gets himself to the foul line anyway. He's one of those players, though, that's always getting fouled. <laughs> and I mean that the nicest possible way. 35-27. He's at the line. You know, when a team is struggling, it's also little things like that. When Kirk Penny's shooting the basketball well, he'll find a way to stay in the game. And if things just not going great for Kirk Penny at the moment, you get another look at the contact that was up. But back to Kirk Penny. You know, he gets two fouls, and now he's in foul trouble. He's got to sit on the bench. You know, hard to get your offense going when you get cheap little fouls like that yeah. and being in foul trouble. Yeah, Penny with three fouls. Brisbane have only given up three in total. So even though there's been some positive signs from Corey Webster, who's up to nine points, New Zealand still find themselves ten points in arrears. And the home crowd really involved. Got a little sloppy. Up the foot of Corey Webster. Andre Lamanis likes this kid, this young kid, Matt Kenyon. Not just, he was a very good scorer for the New South Wales under-20s team at the national tournament, but he likes him defensively. And he's sticking him on Corey Webster now, doing a good job. The youngest contracted Australian rookie this year on any roster. He's 18 years and eight months old. And there he is. He's about to take it. And Young a fraction late. 
He probably should have taken that one, man. Yeah. And, you know, shot clock down to about five. Deferred to his more experienced teammates almost. But he kicks it to, to Young, who's not really a scorer. Webster takes charge. Have a Crombie. That looks better in the air, but didn't have the right depth. Now Gibson again. Here's Kenyon. Oh, through the contact. Couldn't get the shot up. Good patience by the youngster. And often when you pump fake and the guy goes in the air, watch this. Pump fake, you know you're going to get clobbered. Yeah. And often you'll move your feet. A travel often occurs here. But he holds his poise and gets himself to the foul line. And we've got a timeout. Let's talk about three-point specialists from over the years. And look who's on top as far as percentage goes. Almost at 50% Daniel Kickett. The guys that have taken more than... 200 and uh, some good names on there. You turn into a coach if you can shoot the threes, mate. Yeah, no kidding. We'll kick it obviously on top of that. Just super efficient, not just with his three point shooting, but his low post game. And a couple of names on there Paul Stanley, I had the pleasure of playing with him when I was playing in Hobart. And he was automatic. And Brian Gorgian, great shooter. Probably the guy that wasn't just a pure shooter on there, but shot a great percentage was Alan Black. Yeah. He was more known more as a defensive player, but very selective outside the three-point line and knock it down. So he's saying he's cheating by not taking a nap. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> career he's got over, you know, the minimum. So, you know, he's legit. Well. Andre Lamanis would be very pleased with the way Brisbane have fought back after consecutive losses here tonight. Lead by 10. Kick has been superb, but Bairstow's really come into the game. He has eight points to his name. Ball and Airy, though. He would be very concerned with the way his team is playing, not just tonight, but this year. He himself played 185 games. The breakers under Andre Lamanis. You now we've spoken about how Brisbane have gotten good shot attempts and good looks, pounding the paint. You know they're 11 of 19 from the field, at just under 58 percent. You know you just can't allow a team to just do exactly what they want on the offensive end of the floor for such a high percentage. Kenyon really enjoying getting some court time. It's been minimal for him so far in this, his first NBL season. But showing already that he, he belongs out there. Have a Crombie. Kona had that pinched off him after getting the hard rebound. So things not really improving for new. Petrie seeing some time as well. So certainly using full depth. He floats that one off the glass. He's already on the way down. So the points will count. And out now to a 14-point margin game high. Urgency required. Woodside goes low and gets the two. Second lot of points for the night. Veal from way outside. Just when you think he's quiet. You know, he really hasn't looked to do a whole lot, probably because they've gotten such good shots. They haven't needed him. But that takes him over the 60% mark. A long bomb like that. Why not? That's the dagger. You feel like you got a team on the ropes. 21 points last Sunday. Scored more points than anyone else in the NBL in the last three years, Jermaine Beal. There's a 
scoring leaders so far tonight. As we said by Daniel Kickett doing most of the damage in the first quarter. As Mitchell again shows those springs, puts them into action. Got to get the ball to him more. Exactly, especially on a mismatch like that against Kenyon. And Jermaine Beal goes to the line. That mismatch down there, Kenny probably felt like, you know, I might as well gamble, go for the pass, because if he caught it and he was in trouble down on the block, he had good position on it. He's getting so many shots away at that Brisbane at the moment, aren't they? Too many easy shots. Got easy ones, and then they're in a position where they don't want to just give up a layup, so they they have to foul. Yeah, and that's becoming an issue for them already. <laughs> Three. The rest of them were reasonably well spread. He's going to 12 fouls to three. The breakers haven't even been to the line yet tonight. <laughs> I was looking at it like, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So you made me say it. I love that. <laughs> uh. That's how it's going to be played between us. As long as we know the rules here, that's all right. I'm laughing because you're right on the money on that one. I was like, that can't be right. Number two, push two shots. Now we've got some. We'll see whether those numbers are working or not. Oh, my goodness. Man. No wonder, you know, Hanari was complaining about the foul count early in the game, but 17, and not only have they had 17 attempts, they're 17 for 17. Crombie get there first and can't even make it count. All right. So their first venture to the foul line. Nudges them within 14 points again, but a reset for the Bulls. Sean Bruce. Tarangi. Get Petri. Adding experience to this Bulls lineup. Bruce. Crowd were trying to warn him. And Petri is in the right spot. Webster. Draws all the heat. Swings it back to Big Man, puts up the big shot and drops it down rather low. He is a very good three-point shooter. Hasn't been able to connect in the early stages of the season, but you can tell on that pick and pop, he looked like he could knock that down every night. Nice looking stroke. Well, one of the features tonight as they take an important time out here with the margin 13 is Andre Lamanis, first championship coach of the Breakers back in 2011. And some great scenes from way back when. And they have been, like I said, with the Perth Wildcats, the dominant team in this new century. And look at that. And great, great teams with great players. Dylan Boucher, great role players. Just stacked with talent. And that man was the leader. All right, Kicks, if you don't have the pass direct, maybe it's on through Sean, and then Dollar steps out and we play out of that. So press break here. If it's zone, go with wheel, motion wheel. Okay, remember on the wheel, as we come and sprint into that screen here, this guy's holding, okay, and that other post is your so Andre Lamanis would be very pleased with his team at the moment. 13 points is the margin. Critical minute 37 remaining, particularly for the New Zealand Breakers. Who you have to say, there's a lot of upside for them because what they've shown us so far needs a lot of improving. No kidding. And you know what? They're only down 13. I mean, for a team, their opponent is shooting 60% from the field, 75 outside the three-point line, and perfect 17 for 17 from the foul line. They're only down 13. A team can't possibly shoot any better than that in the second half. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. That 
one gets away from Beal, but finds a way to get it back. He really worked Webster over that time. Comes up short on the shot. Mitchell down the floor. Abercrombie. Wandered in, wandered out. Goes in again. Tough one to make, and he knew it. Woodside with a run and jump, and the... So hard on the other end to get that floater to go and put a good foul shooter on the line. Now they can't miss tonight, Sean Bruce. Wait here, guys. Wait here also. He makes his first. They've almost all been to the line as well. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the stats column and the free throw for the Bullets. Two fouls to his name. Webster sensing that a good shot was needed. But this doesn't quite come together for him. He has nine points. Last 30 seconds of the first half. Some late minutes for the Bullets. Oh, kick it. Now Bruce back in to kick it. Didn't quite have the touch required. So 50-37. Webster. Great steal from Bruce, shares it with Beal, no foul. And time expires. Half time at the Brisbane Convention and Exhibition Centre. And the crowd is certainly making plenty of noise for the home team. The New Zealand Breakers last year's grand finalists have not bought their A game so far. The Bullets who have had trouble scoring so far this year 50 points thanks to this man, Daniel Kickett, who's with Steve. Well, Daniel, you guys are only averaging just over 70 points a game. Looks like you guys have broken that drought. Yeah, I think we're comfortable in our stuff now. We're getting more comfortable as each game goes. And uh, I think tonight we're exploring some options and that's paying off. But it's, you know, we've got to knuckle down. They started pressing us there at the end of that half. And we're just going to keep uh, confident with the ball and look after it. Well, you personally still shooting the ball well outside the three-point line, but you're really working it over on the low block. Yeah, you know, just uh, taking what's given to me, and obviously teams are trying to take away that three. And uh, within this system, I'm I'm comfortable. I get a lot of looks inside the three-point line, so I'm just going to keep being aggressive. All right, thanks, Daniel. No worries, thanks. 13 points in the first half. Plenty of work to do, though, for the breakers. Paul Hanari finding life difficult as the number one man for the breakers. They trail by 13 points at the half. Back with more in a moment. same
Well, there hasn't been too many highlights for the travelling team tonight in Brisbane, the New Zealand Breakers, but Akil Mitchell has certainly provided both of them getting as high as you like and slamming it down. But they've got some work to do, that's for sure, the New Zealand Breakers. So they find themselves in a fair bit of trouble, Steve Caffino, at halftime. They are. I think the stagnant offense is a concern. Obviously, the good looks at the Brisbane Bullets are getting our concern. Defensively, I think that's what they'll talk about. But the bright side is they could be down by more than 20, the way the Brisbane Bullets are shooting the basketball. And you can see they're spreading it around, too. Daniel Pickett's been excellent. There's 13 points, but they've really spread it around. Bearstow with eight. So they really can have some room for improvement there and get themselves up back into this game. Let's have a look at the numbers. Astonishing from the three-point line. The Bullets have been very selective with their shooting, and as a result of that, they've made the ones that, that most of the ones that they've taken. And, it's, and the foul trouble's also been there for the Breakers, hasn't it? It is, too. And if they can keep them off the line, that is where the difference in the game has been. The Bullets have gotten to the line, and they've been perfect when they get there. Started off the game very well with Kirk Penny getting a good look, point-blank look inside off of a cut, but then Kickett's the man who's been able to find and maneuver his way to the basket all year long for Brisbane. When he does that, they look good. I thought it was the beginning of Kirk Penny having a big night, really looked confident, but then it was just point-blank shots, layups, and dunks for the Bullets. Watch it move the basketball around, wide open look for Adam Gibson. You look at these highlights, single coverage, they feel like Bacona can guard Kickett, but he's been unstoppable down on the block this year, but New Zealand got it going a little bit. Got to figure that they're going to do it. They got talent out there. And this is what Brisbane probably afraid of. They're talking there and saying, as well as we shot the basketball, we should be up by more. Yeah. Well, there's a little bit of Corey Webster there, wasn't there, in that second quarter. And uh, those highlights of Mitchell. But not enough. Abercrombie hasn't really got it going for them yet. You can see Beal, who was pretty quiet, really. Kick it was dominant in the first quarter. And others like Bearstow and Beal took over in that second quarter. So it has been a very good team performance. Uh, by the Brisbane Bullets. Uh, one of their, no doubt, one of their best recruits this year as they come back into the competition has been Daniel Kickett. We know he's fantastic from outside, but this year we've seen him really work his way into the basket and again tonight. Not too much from outside, but the, the, the shot he took, he made. I love his poise. I like when he gets the ball, he just takes his time. He just takes whatever the defense gives him. He takes the three, you run at him, he puts the ball on the floor, single coverage, he backs the man down, he waits get a double team he's a good passer out of it look at all these highlights he's just letting the game come to him he's only taken seven shots and he's dominated the first half and great players have the ability to do that and not hog the basketball and get their teammates involved one of the big issues for New Zealand has been their stars really at the start of this year and Corey Webster who was a shooting machine last year averaged over 20 points a game has just been getting into double figures so far this year he started on the bench tonight but he came on he certainly played a lot of that second quarter it didn't look like he was starting to get it going, but it's still not quite at his best, is it? He doesn't look like that guy that's going to drop 30 or have a really big night. He is a dangerous player who you don't want to get into the rhythm. As you can tell by those highlights, he's quite capable of hitting tough shots, but really not the same Corey Webster. That's the MVP of a final. All right, half time here. They brought out the food. The boys here are really enjoy. We got a beautiful, we got a nice smell over here. They're great to have basketball back in Brisbane, and we're back with the second half right after this.
The Brisbane Bullets are back and it's great to have basketball back in this city and they're playing very nicely. Lead by 13, let's hear from their coach Andre Lamanis is with Steve. Well, it looks like you guys are having a little trouble putting the ball in the basket the first couple of weeks, but it doesn't look like that this half. Um, yeah, I think we've done a good job uh, getting the ball to where we need to get it to. It's um, with a new team, it's always going to take some time, you know, and just figuring out who we are when we need to score. That's important, but uh, we're only halfway through this game, and it's important we stay committed to that. But somebody that's not an expert, you shot the ball extremely well, but not a real big lead. Is that a concern? Uh, no, I mean it's about the process over the course of 40 minutes, and um, I think if we just stay true to the process, we'll. Not as well. Oh, no, let's not even talk about the numbers here. New Zealand looked flat. They just looked yeah. like they lacked the passion to win this basketball game. I mean, unless they talked about that at halftime and come out with some type of spark, they're, they're going to struggle to beat Brisbane, who looked focused. Corey Webster, who wasn't a starter tonight, he's going to do that here at the start of the second half. Gets them in motion now. 13-point deficit for New Zealand. Crombie. Woodside. Plenty of motion for them. Got one on the head there somehow. Yeah, he got his money's worth on that one. Get another look. He's going for, for a dunk. Get another look at it. Like Jervis with the foul. Abercrombie, who started on his last three tries, does the same again. He's such a class player, just can't afford that. You know, when a team looks flat, you look at the effort areas, you know, look at the concentration areas, too. Take three and step two, though. Yeah, sometimes that's all you need. Hit a shot, not playing well, hit a couple of shots, get a couple of stops. Well, they made that a lot harder than it should have been, but again, New Zealand have given it up too easily. Field. Another good shot taken, another good shot made. Woodside, got himself free. Bacona. 
Very aware of where Webster hey! was, what? but he gets there himself. Allen kick it. That's who's out there for Brisbane. Good lineup for them. Good point blank shot, three point shot, then a good strong post move by Vicka Vicka Vicona. You know, I, I think that New Zealand sense that they're a little flat too. The bench has been out the entire third quarter trying to get something started for these guys on the road. You know, Vicka Vicona's going to bring it. That's who's out there now, as we said on the floor. Vicona, the Pledger, Woodside, Abercrombie, and Corey Webster. So the margin back to single figures. Gibson right up in his face. The defense has to be tight here. Craig tries to battle his way through. He does exactly that. Great matchup with him and Abercrombie and excellent patience by Tory Craig. As good as he is, he can't do it. Fair to say Andre didn't like the call. <laughs> I had a great view on that, but there we go. Let's go. Let it go. Andre Lamana said he had a great view on it. You know, to me, it was hard to tell who went off. Yeah, we've seen the replay. <laughs> Funny about that with coaches. <laughs> they believe it, too. Trying to spread them here. Woodside takes the big ball and makes it. He's got to hit that. You know, if they're going to go underneath the on ball screen, he's got to make them pay. He's down to eight. Kick it gets there too easily, but he gets rejected. Well done by Big Pledger. Woodside thought about it again. Instead, returns the favor into Pledger. And he draws the contact. Jervis with the hard foul on Abercrombie. Kick it this time with the hard foul. Putting Pledger to the line. A lot more opportunities from the foul line. Only three in the first half we've already had. This will be their third one. Here in the third. Not very convincing, but it drops. Suddenly it's back to seven. Still can't make it count. Frustration there for Pledger in New Zealand. They're on a four-point run. Can they make it more than that? There's heavy contact inside. Now on Mika Bacona. We get a look. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it just looked awkward. Get another look at it. Yeah. I think Kicker was just looking away. He ran, ran him over. Kind of not much of a factor in this game because of the foul trouble. Two of two for his five points. They're shooting the ball at a decent clip. I mean, a very good clip. 51.3% from the field, 44 outside the three-point line. It's just a difference in the foul shooting. 19 and 19 for Brisbane, three of seven for New Zealand. Nice separation on that one. Maybe got a little, got away with a little bit of a push off. But needless to say, sticks a nice shot. New Zealand have scored the last six to get themselves within five. All right, while we take a little break here during the timeout, let's go back to last night. And it was the Perth Wildcats at home to Illawarra. Illawarra started strongly, but Perth were able to get things going in the second quarter. 
take the lead by the half, and they've ended up having a seven-point win at home. And plenty of action down there. Casey Prather and Ingram as well getting involved. Good to see him getting some big threes late in the game. Well, they would have had to keep things very simple. Well, funny looking, funny looking shot. Looks like he shoots it from his chin. But obviously, the type of player the Perth Wildcats are looking for. Good to see him get off the plane and get a win for the Perth Wildcats. Yeah, Andre Ingram played 21 minutes last night for nine points. Yes. All made by three pointers. Yeah, I don't care what team you are, you know. Looking at, you know, Brisbane win the first two games of the season. And Melbourne United's always tough, but to me, I can't tell how good you are until you play the Perth Wildcats, especially in Perth. And that, that's the yardstick and how you measure how good your team is. Well, right now, Brisbane are feeling some heat. New Zealand, a six-point run. And the Bullets have just four points so far for the quarter. Craig wasn't expecting that. Beal, you have to expect him to shoot, but he doesn't. And that's a travel call on Mitch Young. And things just starting to just fray a little at the seams here for Brisbane. Just getting away from that attacking slashing offense that they had in the first half which got them a lot of free throws that happens when you have a lead you start to protect that lead yeah. instead of going after it here's woodside got a really good look at it in time and suddenly it's back to three points where does this come from that's the difference you stick those open shots and not be tentative. Fourteen to four for the quarter. Gibson to try and change that. Can't. Woodside takes it down the floor. Within ten. It's a different feel about New Zealand right now. Sharing the load. Bacona. Foul called. Offensive. And both refs on that one. Brad Giesch gets the call. He was on the baseline. But everybody in the building saw that one. Think of Bacona probably just trying to do something a little too much. A real obvious one. That is automatic in this league. You, re you wrap your arm around. Even if you don't get your hand around, you just get your elbow around, they'll call that one too. The let off for Brisbane, who are feeling the stress and the strain right now in this third quarter. Who are they going to go to? Neil wants it back. Young feeding Gibson. Directed in Young. Scrambling hard. Fourth Fletcher says no. And now it's Webster chance to level the score and they kick it out for the three. Tori Craig out right here. Best. Just calmly rolls it in for two. Two great blocks. Pleasure. Pleasure with a block on one end. Tory Craig with a basket saving block on the other. Pleasure with the big one there. Gets the fast break started. Keep the cameras rolling. Here comes Tory Craig. Give me that. Margin stands at five. Here we go. Woodside at the line. And again, then different shooting from the line continues. 31 year old import. Then Woodside, eight points on debut. At eight to ten on his two games before tonight. Slots that one in. Still a delicate. Big boys game at four points. Pressure on Gibson. They pass their way down the floor. Field. Craig trying to find his way through. Good defense again. Marnus not afraid to use his bench. Young Kenyon's out there. Gibson. 
Nudging a wing. Craig. Lost it. Woodside. Will he force it or not? No. Penny back out there. Hold up, Besto. Kenyon. Needed Besto's help. Good take by Kenyon. Forces the weak side to come over. Clobber two by a screen from Mitchell. Yeah, no call. Oh, passed it between the two. And that gets the crowd back engaged in the action here in Brisbane. Some missed opportunities by New Zealand. Yeah. A shot that gets blocked, that's a layup, and then two turnovers. to eight for the quarter has the margin back to six. Bray almost lost it completely. He's looking for the foul. Lost control of the ball. Let's go. 41 for the hole. We got two. A turnover on a baseline out of bounds, and normally Brisbane will execute not only a good shot but a bucket. Look at this, just good active hands. It's a dangerous save right yeah. into the key of the opponent's basket. So, so much has changed in this third quarter. Now we're seeing regular trips to the line for the breakers, something which almost didn't happen at all in the first half. What has to change is they have to start making it. And then Woodside does. Concern for Lamars. Back to four points. Tension grows here in Brisbane. Offensive called on Craig. Can't believe it. Just had that offhand in the chest. Of, we'll get another look at it. See, just pushing him off there. See, to me, you have to act to get that call. I mean, there's no way he pushed him that hard. Fifth foul in the corner. Penny. Moving into low. Comes on glued. Gleeful look for Kirk Penny. Realised the call had gone their way. And they catch a break there because that was a horrible pass by Rob Lowe. Abercrombie. Penny. Abrupt move. Good persistent defense there from Kenyon, but couldn't stop Penny putting it in the hole. And the margin cut to just two. Urgency required here for Brisbane. Bruce. Yeah, Petrie seeing some minutes now. Got away from Kenyon. He takes the big three. Chance for New Zealand to take the lead. All level of scores. They're going to run their set here. Mitchell. Eyes darting. Oh, he makes it. What about that? That ball looked like it was knocked loose and he shot it off his palm. Scores a level. Astonishing comeback. 13 points down. Did not look like it, New Zealand. Big transformation in this game. 58 apiece. And that wasn't looking like a great possession either. A lot of standing around. Lamanis gets a couple of subs in. Tarangi. And Jervis. Woodside's really stepped up this quarter. He's up to 14 points now. The in court. Jervis. He made it hard, but he still makes the basket. Needed to. They have the lead once more. Good D from low. He made Jervis take a tough shot. Have a crummy. He thought it was in. Beal. With the response for the bullets. Mitchell again. And there was some 
contact, low contact there. And they're going to take the lead here. Right here, I'm sure Andre Lamont is wrap him up. You know, that is a cheap one to give. Yeah. Either let him go or make him earn it from the line. They haven't been great Buster. from the line tonight. Just a six of 11. That was one of the worst. Still their level. Come from the clouds here, New Zealand. Bruce. Still a Brisbane ball. Lowe's giving them some good minutes. Yeah. And he's changed a couple of shots. He's blocked that one. And of course, he's at three point threat on the other end of the floor. So we're here for a cracking last quarter here in Brisbane. Had it through the last Sunday night. Beal! Crowd disappointed not once but twice. And not third time lucky ever. Crombie never really had it. Webster back out there for New Zealand. Mitchell. Really took on Tarangi. And he'll go to the line again with another chance to put them in front. Now with the aggression, pushing the break, they recognize the mismatch. Mitchell going right at Tarangi. Virginia Cavalier. Got a nice little spin move to the baseline. from the foul line. He's still spinning on the foul line. Lane oh. oh. bricks at the moment. And scores remain level. There we say they really dodge one. Black. Petrie with a run, that was what you want to do, did the right thing. Got it in the Jervis, they're back in front. Gibson with the pass fake, backdoor cut. Mitchell decides to dish it to Abba Crombie. Now Beal, frantic finish to the corner. The foul early. And the referee's a small sport on that one. He says no. He was all over that. Zealand would have went crazy if they counted that. Flash! They're all running different shit. That's a ball for four from the sideline. Deal. That's a tough effort. And we're headed for one heck of a finish here in Brisbane. The Bullets hanging on to a one point lead. They're up by 13 and cruising at half time. No cruise coming up in the last.
Well, a thrilling third quarter, and the New Zealand Breakers suddenly got their act together, coming from 13 points down. At one stage in front, but they find themselves just one point off the pace, and the Brisbane Bullets need to change the momentum of this game once again. Steve Carfino and Anthony Hudson with you this last quarter action. It's the Bullets 64, the Breakers 63, Steve. Just got to like how they came out. You know, benches up, supporting their team. Yeah, you talked Dribble about penetration. it. We were talking numbers, but it was about a whole lot more than that. It was energy, it was effort, all the basics of playing top level sport. I mean, you like to think of the team as a reflection of their coach, and Paul Hanari was never flat. I'm sure he gave it to him at halftime, gave him some motivation to get out there and play like they're capable of playing. So the Bullets' response is required now. Jervis turn to all his starters. Petrie's out there. Gibson back to Petrie again. Oh, lovely little hook over the top. Nice soft hands. Corey Webster rushes past Gibson. Calls the play. Now to execute. Fletcher. They like to have made the two because now he goes where they don't like going. <laughs> exactly. You can see he's a little frustrated after he missed that one. Good dribble penetration by Corey Webster, just being aggressive, not settling for jump shots. As Paul Hanari said at one of the timeouts, we're shooting floaters and pull up jump shots. We're not getting to the rim, we're not getting to the foul line. That's been the difference in the second half, but you got to make your free throws. Six of 15. It's a horror shot. Those are coach killers. So they inch their way back within two. And now Gibson takes it down the floor. He's through the handoff. Deal. This is a shot up. Doesn't get the roll. Penny. Oh, he pushed it. Good take by McCona under severe pressure. Penny looks, shoots, scores! Man, he is super dangerous in transition. So hard to locate him because he gets it off so quickly. Penny up to 14 points. Petrie goes for the big three. Helps himself. He's super selective on those two. You don't see him jacking up a lot of threes. Big game situation, he comes up big. Brisbane back in front for how long? No call, Lamanis thought, big fella, transgressed. They set again. Single figures though, not a lot of time to work with here for Corey Webster. He'll take that, no, and doesn't get the roll. No call, and Bacana helps himself to two. And once again, scores a level with under eight minutes remaining. He can be so dominant, Mika Bacona, for an undersized big man. Rangi. This is Linda Jervis who draws the contact. Jervis so good on the screen and roll. Nice little bounce pass. Also exceptional with finishing with either hand. So you got to respect that. Can't say, oh, you know, no way is he going to make that one. You, know, you don't throw the body on him. He probably makes it. It's been the difference tonight. Pure from the line. 20 from 20 compared to 7 from 16. Right now, it's where the game's being decided. No one there missed for the Bullets. Their perfect record intact. And their lead is 2. Woodside. Penny floats it in the pass. Kona. 
Now Woodside. Kona in the right spot. Desperation from Gibson, the trademark. Craig on the move. Jervis is waiting for him. Craig got fouled. Chalk that one up to Adam Gibson. That's just super hustle. Gets on the floor. Not only does he come up with the ball, he finds a teammate. He'll get it and roll over and find a man. Some shot too from Tory Craig. Just didn't drop. So can they continue this unblemished record from the line when it matters? Just. Guys. 22 from 22. The remnants of the Adam Gibson dive. Warm day in Brisbane, beautiful night, and it'll be beautiful for the home crowd. If they can get over the line, they've been really made to work here. After taking a nine-point lead at quarter time, extending that to 13. New Zealand didn't look like it. Oh, there we go, first miss of the night. That comes. Cutting to get an offensive rebound. Yeah, he wasn't expecting that. He did a good job of the catch, but... And you tell your players... When you catch the ball in the paint, you want to try and come to a jump stop. Be on balance, under control, and make a play. Crowd now starting the chant for the Bullets. Up to the players to execute. Here's Craig. Tickets back out on court. Gibson. Tommy Jervis as well. Gibson. For the contact. That's a big shot. Just loves the big stage. Came up big in the first game here against Perth. He's into double figures. Oh, Pledger again. The double grab. So after making all that move to get there and get in front, the breakers just can feel it slipping away. They're not careful. Literally slipping away at the moment. Literally. You can feel for Pledger here. He's doing the right thing. He's cutting to the right area. Just couldn't handle it. He's dripping with sweat. Big match for both teams who have come off consecutive defeats. Breakers, one win, two losses, the Bullets, and even two and two. Go ahead of the ledger tonight. Craig, now Beal. Besto, not involved as well. Gibson, he's feeling it. Maybe a little bit too much. Kona. That's involved. Penny had the missing. Not the best shot. Floats it up there. No result. Craig's into his move. Completes it in style. I thought he travelled. Look at this. One, two. Yeah, he put it down. I thought he took three, but he took two before he put the ball on the floor. One, two. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't as obvious as I thought. A post touch. Two kill. A kill. A kill. You got mix. Hey, press break right here. All right. Once we get it up, we got it out of our hands. All right. Just want to go a hit tap, or if we advance it quickly, keep advancing through gets, but get it back and then roll it in for a chin. 
Brisbane on an eight-point run here, and that's the lead. Still time for New Zealand. Brisbane want to close this game out. The last two games at Brisbane that have been played here at the Brisbane Convention Center have gone to overtime. All right. Let's hope that continues. For us, not for them. 77-69, you saw the quarter-by-quarter quarter numbers. Brisbane doing the damage in the first half. Big third quarter from the breakers. For the home team of Steady. Mitchell. Tough basket, tough basket made. And he doesn't go to the line, which is probably a relief. <laughs> yeah, he was just hoping that thing rolled in. <laughs> Back to six. Gibson gets it down the floor eventually. Kick it. He's had very few shots after a dominant opening quarter. Still on 13 points. And again, he doesn't take the shot. Instead, the dish off to Craig. This month perfectly, timing is everything. Mitchell. Now the two count. Watch this. Shot clock down to one. You see the buzzer go off the red light just before that in an he goes in. Mitchell down the court, makes two. And now at the line, has not made a free throw tonight. Sorry to remind him. Until then, hadn't looked like making a free throw, but now he has. He's back to five. Any relief that the Brisbane fans might have been feeling. Just sneaks away again. Beal. Petrie was cutting to the basket. Gibson into Bairstow. Craig, that's a great ball to make. It's a home ball. Often offensive rebounds have been a struggle every time New Zealand get themselves right back in. An offensive rebound and a made shot to stretch the lead out. Ten seconds to work with here. Petrie, we know he can do it. Bairstow, another big offensive board. The lucky style there off the left. Seven points to the margin, 81-74. Austin. Tim, Tim, here. Got it. A bit of confusion out there. The breakers are just had possession and we're looking to use it. Just about to go the other way. New Zealand felt like they had an advantage. Kirk Penny right there, not happy with that decision to mop the floor up. <laughs> Gotta look after the safety of the players. It's right in the middle of the key where the wet spot was. Here's Woodside. Floats one in. Mitchell. At least the scoring was denied from Brisbane point of view. That's a good foul. And Mitchell goes to the foul line where he's one of four. Yeah. Shows that athleticism tonight, though, hasn't in other aspects of his game. 15 points, four boards. He's the team high scorer for the Breakers. Besto now with 14. And has that honour for Brisbane, who really shared a spread of points after kick it was dominant with an 11 point first quarter. On the hand here, Mitchell shoved that one up. 
he's lost all confidence in his form here. It's back to six, what well, might have been though, nine from 19. Terrible numbers from the foul line. Lead is six, 3.20 on the clock. Feel, ooh, a little reach from Mitchell. Couldn't help himself. goes for a, you know, like a hack. Kick it and Abercrombie both on four fouls. Gibson. Petrie. Craig! Crowd on their feet! Again the breathing space. Eight points. Woodside. Mitchell draws a crowd. And again, out the window, there's two more. Makes it 17, 18 for the night. Back to six. Still within reach. They need to stop here, though. Using as many seconds as possible. Feel. You know he's still a threat and he wants to take it himself. Forced to put in a hard pass to Petrie, it gets away. And that's exactly what the breakers need. Mitchell with a hand in there, got a piece of it, they get their stop. Good side. Just a hope more than anything. Great D though by the home team. Two minutes remaining. Protecting a six-point lead and looking to build. Gibson! Offensive! And Adam Gibson was turning a corner already. Foul was called, I think, on kick it, wasn't it? Yeah, he just steps yep. up. So that's it for him. So they'll have to get through the last two minutes and two seconds without... Best scorer this season, Daniel Kickett. And the others that are in some trouble. Abercrombie with four and with the ball. Woodside, where's the score going to come from? A stutter for New Zealand and then a miss. And a prayer answered. Abercrombie, the hardest of threes, the most satisfying. And suddenly the game's on a knife edge again. <laughs> Busted play. How many times you see that? Broken play, ball going out of bounds, throw it to a guy, catch and shoot three. Well, the action is fast and furious in the NBL. Three-point game here. New Zealand a chance with a minute 40 to go. But it doesn't stop because tomorrow we head to Melbourne for a top four clash between United and the Perth Wildcats. How will United fare without the injured Chris Golding? The Wildcats fresh from a thrilling win over Illawarra. Only one heck of a clash then, Monday Night Basketball. The Andrew Gay Show continues. The Kings are on a three-game roll, and we love it, but Illawarra will be desperate. One and three. A lot to look forward to in round three of the NBL. What a start to the season it's been. And unbelievably, the Bullets, who led by 13 points here at halftime, were headed by the Breakers at one stage. Back out to an eight-point lead. It looked as if they were just about home. They find themselves only three points in front with a minute 40 on the clock, Steve. Give New Zealand some credit. You know, they looked down in the dumps, flat in the first half. Even in their comebacks where Brisbane has gotten themselves that cushion, they've been able to keep fighting back. They've just found a way to stay in this game and make it a ball game, three-point game. You would have never thought that in the first half. Well, as we've laboured on, they're 22 from 23 from the free throw line, the Brisbane Bullets, compared to 9 from 19 for New Zealand. Hard to win with those numbers, but they're in a position where they still could steal it here. 
You know, they've had their opportunities, you know, throughout the game. Wow, offensive call. On Beal. Just held on to Vacona, I believe it was, trying to get over the top of a Beal screen. Now to a minute 32 now. Just right of frame here. Get a look here on that. Yeah, that's a foul. And probably one you don't want to call in the late stages of the game. But an offensive foul and an illegal screen from Kickett, and then that one too. So two turnovers on some mental errors. Have a crumbie. Woodside. Will it be Kirk Penny? Who's going to take the shot? And where will it be from? Mitchell waiting. He's happy to take it on. Rolls in the two. It's a one-point game. Crowd stunned by this. Silenced by this. But need to find their voice in the closing seconds. Down to a minute. Gibson. Petrie takes it on. Helps himself to two. And the timeout called by New Zealand. Petrie's come up big. Yep. Hit a big three earlier in the fourth quarter. And nothing more timely than that one. Shot clock winding down. He knew he had to make a play. And he'd deliver it. He's shooting at 83%, Petrie. That's what's ahead for New Zealand. Doesn't get any easier. They have Adelaide at home. Adelaide with Randall, of course, one of the stars of the competition. So they've got three of the next four at home. If they can somehow find a win here tonight, they can get their season back on track. You mentioned Adelaide. That was one team that you can talk about those four matches, and I'll get back to Adelaide. Well, the Bullets have got the Kings coming up both home and away. And then they pass with the Breakers this time. New Zealand home court. And Cairns finishes off their next run. And you've got to really just keep pushing on. You know, this competition is so close. you got to, even the top teams are going to take their lumps. You know, like Adelaide, they started off. Well, sorry, Illawarra got 122 against yeah. them in the first game, and they look, Adelaide looked terrible. Lost Mitch Creek. And yet, since then, they've turned it around. <laughs> 52 seconds. It's been one strange ball game, so there still could be more to come. New Zealand trailing by three, but with possession. Plenty more possessions left in this game. You do not have to go for a three now. Close out on goal. Woodside. That was not easy, but Cairns rejected by Craig. They can start again. Oh. The carious throw. Woodside. Down to 32 seconds. Takes the two. And it doesn't go. Still up for grabs. Craig, they close on him. Has to get the pass off here. Foul call on Vakona. That's his fourth. And they'll go to the line. That's a, I mean, obviously a huge stop. You think Kirk Penny or Abercrombie would have, would have been involved in that play. It was mostly Woodside coming off the on-ball screen. That Brooks player of the game, Tory Craig. You can pick your, take your pick from a lot of guys. And you got to figure that Brisbane, after making all these free throws the entire game, we're going to close it out from the foul line. Well, it would be fitting, wouldn't it, really? It's been the difference in the game. Tory Craig, 15 points to his name, four rebounds. Some tough boards he's made, too. The lead is four. 
The lead is five. Another timeout. Well, there's some great contributions in this game. Petrie has come up big in the fourth. Five of six from yeah. the foul line. He was kicking early in the game in the first half. Bearstow's been solid. Five of six. But Torrey Craig, six of eight. Like you said, those statistics to get in. The Labrooks player of the game, and he's come up big on both ends of the floor. Remember his block shot, too, driving to the basket, regaining his balance. All these shots are late in the shot clock. Showing you the touch in transition. Again, beating the shot clock. Good strong drive when New Zealand are making their run. He's been able to come up with big buckets. Well, the fans can't complain about the action they've had since basketball NBL style has returned to this city this year. It's been close. It's been exciting. It's not over yet here. But they're going to need something special, New Zealand. 24 seconds, five points to make out. What's the play here? Well, you gotta, you gotta. Busy night to keep the floor clean. Yeah. They've been on the floor a lot. Beal goes down hard here. Maybe look for low on a pick and pop too. Maybe you can catch him with the element of surprise there. Kick it out to him. There's the shot from Penny. He was well balanced. Doesn't go. Up for grabs again. Craig the man. Through the foul. That won't count. But that might be just about the game. Certainly, if he makes these shots, they'll need a miracle. Well, they've got the music going like the game's over. <laughs> Penny gets a good look at it. Tory Cray. Got the very, very user friendly roll that time. 17 points for the night. Six points the margin. Deep breath. And comes out well short. So, can they get two threes up? Oh, didn't take it. Low went long. Comes up short. And the ball game is Brisbane's. And didn't they have to fight hard for it, the Bullets? Two seconds remaining. Crowd on their feet. against his old team. Great game of Saturday night basketball for you at home. The NBL is back big time in Brisbane. And the boards are back on track. 88 to 82, the final scoreline. It was a lot harder than it looked like it was going to be at halftime. They led by 13, they gave up the lead. They get the win.
That was a lot harder than it might have been for the Brisbane Bullets who dominated the first half. The frustrations grew for New Zealand. 13 points at the half, but it was back to one by three-quarter time and a thrilling stretch saw the Bullets just get home. 88 to 82, Steve Carpino. And once again, the big players make big shots down the stretch. New Zealand came back, made a game of it. Akel Mitchell was outstanding, you know, struggled from the foul line, but their big players came up big too. But in the end, Brisbane deserved to win that game. They outplayed them the whole game. Good yep. credit to New Zealand getting back in the second half, though. Satisfying win. They got a three and two. And we move on tomorrow back to Melbourne for the clash between United and the Wildcats. That is a beauty. Top four clash. That is a cracker. And as I mentioned, to me, you're not a championship caliber team unless you can handle the Perth Wildcats defensive pressure. So the season hotting up already. The Bullets get a great win at home. 88 to 82 over the New Zealand Breakers who are in early season trouble in 2016-17. Hope you enjoyed the night as we did here. A big night in Brisbane, a satisfying result for the Brisbane Bullets. I just came to win. I ain't come to battle, dog. I just came to win. I just came to win. I just came to win, yeah, people talk about me, I just came to win, I just came to win like Kobe in the late show, or like David Letterman.